Peace and love, y'all. It's your brother, Avis, and we're back again with another episode, episode three of What's the Word Wednesdays. So, shout outs to everyone, and shout out to the brother, Sabu, gonna be playing his music throughout the show. So, peace and love to everybody's in here, and we gonna rock out and wait for more couple people to come in. Hey, brother Dallas, I did get to see your... Your car is today, my bad for not getting back to you, bro, man. It has been very busy, my G. That's all I got to say. Hey, Cornelius, what you doing in here, buddy? What's up? Right, y'all. Before we do get it all started, handle it. Hand, handle what you got to do. Before we get it started, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play the, so, the show song that started it all. And then we're going to go ahead and start getting into these topics, which I also got to paste this for y'all. Let's put that in there, and we're good to go. All right. So, welcome to What's the Word Wednesdays, Episode 3, everyone. Thank you for all being here, and let's get this show started off right. Yeah, um, um, this to anybody. Not yet, Cornelius. Not yet. This to, uh, Skillcase. Skills. So the question I got for y'all What's the word y'all? What's the word? 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 And that's what's up y'all Alright now, with that going, I just wanted to throw the icon up real quick, but this is the background icon, y'all, for What's the Word Wednesdays, just quickly so everyone can end up seeing it. I'm not going to keep it up too long, but let's get this started. So, everybody, in the comments, shoot, let me know, what's the word? What's been going on? How has your strength, which I like to call weak, how has it been so far? What's been going on? What's the word? Before I get started with my piece. What's the word, y'all? What's the word? 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 All right, y'all. So when it comes to the word, at least right now, current events wise, what I've been seeing and noticing a lot of talk when it comes to the aspect of actually a lot of aid that's being given to to us, the American people, either through the CARES Act, and they're also doing what I think I believe is called the Hero, the Heroes Act, where we're looking at getting another $1,200 stipend. What did he mean? And we are looking at how that's going to actually either come into effect or not come into effect due to the financing from the government giving out close to, I don't know, around about how much, but they're still wearing you know negotiations for all of that so right now there's possibility that we're gonna have another wave of the stimulus check coming that's what i've been seeing you said rob how you doing tell your brother i said i'm living and learning and we all good fam it's good to see you up in here too cornelius but yeah so I've been hearing about the the stipends as well as I've been hearing about the the drop in at least in California from what I know. I don't know if this is all around in different states as well, but there is also there's going to be a drop to the amount of money that's given for unemployment. Before you were getting close to about one or two hundred dollars but on top of that you also got six hundred dollars so technically you're getting close to around either six hundred to about almost eight hundred dollars 
a week for unemployment. Now, after this week that just passed, now it's going back to where it wasn't supplementing 100% of folks who were unemployed and were able to pay off what they needed to for their bills and things. Now they were thinking of cutting it down to about 70%. So we're still looking at that decrease when it comes to more financial support due to COVID and everything going on. So just know that those are still up in the air as well as I've been looking and seeing a lot of different areas, including Florida. Where else? A lot more on the like east to south coast when it comes to a lot of more re-emerging cases when it comes to COVID. So, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. And this whole idea, too, that's been going around, too, current events-wise, of a lot of misinformation in general. So, a lot of misinformation around whether, you know... COVID is really impacting people when it's not, as well as misinformation on laws that are being passed. Just in general, the idea of fake news. It's been there and now it's even more noticeable, especially at least what I've been seeing this, this past strength and going on into the few other days is there's a lot of talk about misinformation. There's only one original. It's Bush and Mills. then the other Mills, other thing I saw current event wise today too as well was one of the notable founders for the Roots is Malik B. Back way when for the Roots, the legendary Roots crew passed away as well too. So, you know, respects to to the family and all those who knew him and were involved with him may he continue to provide people with substance through his music now on into the spiritual world and the spiritual realm where he is and what's up Kundin? good to see you here you're my ig teacher <laughs> Hey, you funny, man. Hey, I appreciate you being up in here, both of y'all. All of y'all that's in here, really. So thank you for coming. So what's the word Wednesdays? And really here, I'm just out here right now. I'm talking about current events I've been seeing. But if there's anything you guys have, if your questions, you know, you know, comments, even anything you've seen going on this past week or strength, as I like to call it, go ahead, drop them in the comments or you're more than welcome to hop on and, and, and talk with me. So just know this is a it's a community thing where we get to come and discuss this. And with those different things besides me being on current events right now, the topics that we did have for today besides current events, we have finding focus. So what does that look like and what is what's the main reason why we should be finding focus? And the last one being what is power and how do we use it? Is it more so to be used in a negative positive wherever you end up deciding or finding that to be so anything anybody's got that's been going on at least this week or past week just throw it down in there in the comments while we playing in the background the brother sabi smooth for today's show So right now, we don't have anything too much right now. It's all good, y'all. But if there's something that pops up in your head, just let me know. Anything else current event-wise? I've only I've only say there's been only a couple other stations getting a lot more stricter when it comes to, you know, the whole epidemic and things of that nature. But other than that, there's nothing else that's been going on. Mmm. Oh, I actually have the book cooned in. So I have the 48 um, Laws of Power and I've never heard of the 12 Pros of Power. 
That's what's up. I'm. That's what you were on earlier today. That was the show you had on earlier today. I only got to peep real quick, but that's what's up, man. That book is that book is huge. Like here, I got y'all. Hold on, I'll show you. Like this thing. It's thick. Got so much of it in there. So much information as well too. But that's what's up. I'm glad to I'm glad to hear that's what was going on and having that type of conversation. And you feeling bored, bro? So tell me like what do you do then, bro? Like what what do you do to keep yourself calm? Keep yourself entertained right now. Cause I get it, bro. It can definitely be very you know, boring, boring during these times. Cause we, a lot of us, we still all locked up in our rooms and places as long as even if you're not even talking or being able to go out and have conversations with people. Yeah. It's very, it's very difficult right now. Like, yeah, people are really trying to find things that they can do to, to cope and chill in the times right now. So what do you usually do, bro? And good to see you up in here faking. Welcome. Welcome. Shoot. Yeah, bro, just finished my corner second story, story time, and it be on content. That's what's up, man. Congrats to you on your second episode, brother. Congrats, G. Yes. I feel that. I feel that, Kundin. I mean, I'm literally doing, you know, doing the same thing. Like, to keep yourself entertained, keep yourself, you know, really in tune with yourself because this is really a great time if i spoke on it before it's a great time to really do that and really dive into like looking within yourself and getting things together with yourself play basketball in my driveway i feel that you got to get outside connect the nature and that's all fine and well like figure some stuff out like cornelius soon when i'm able to get stuff together like I definitely want to get you in here, my man, and show you around how to record. Also, even get behind the camera and take some pictures, too. So you can have a little bit more stuff to do, you know. So I might just pop over there and do that for you with you, too. But, yeah. With that, if there's anything current events-wise, throw them in there. Now we're going to move to the next topic that i have on here and feel free to throw other questions in here this is a community discussion so be willing to engage which a lot of you are and i appreciate it and any question can go all right now when it comes to the idea of finding focus we have to first understand what what does focus mean to us in terms of our own life for some focus may be really looking at just their basic and needs of what they want some other people focus may be literally the art that they create and for others focus may be the job that they're trying to obtain so when we think about finding focus it's really figuring out how do we lock in on what we find that helps us satisfy not only a need but a goal as well as pushing further to become a better version of ourselves so what does that finding focus look like and feel in my particular case when it comes to finding this focus that we're calling where I put a lot of my focus in on right now. Yeah. So why do you want to find focus? What's your motivation? I like it. So I was just going to get that. So thank you, Kundi. I appreciate that. So when it comes to that, like why I personally want to find focus and what I find focus in, the reason why I do is because of the fact that Usually you see when somebody's really zoned in and they focused, which is a concept I like to, I've called, I've heard before, which is called flow, which is from Check Sit Me High, which, you know, I am I'm, could have butchered his name, but literally 
it's really giving that attention straight to a goal or to a need that you want to excel towards. In my particular case, I'm finding my focus in working with the youth. I'm finding my focus with creating music and art for people. And I also finding my focus when it comes to just upload, uplifting my family, friends and surrounding community, whether it's through community talks, whether it's through conversations, whether it's through just having that intimate time to, to build. So how I'm finding that focus is delving into one of those three, one of those three areas, if not all three of those areas together to get my motivation. And that is my motivation at the same time is being able to delve in and find that focus and putting those together as I like to create and call them my life missions, which touches on all those three areas, which if you want to break that down, each one can touch on, in my particular case, an emotional aspect, mental aspect, a spiritual aspect, physical aspect, and just holistically an aspect as myself as a person. So I'm throwing that back to y'all. So what does finding focus look like for y'all? And if anybody wanted to jump on live and talk with me about that, we definitely can. If not, I can continue going on with us. Oh yeah, Cornelius, we will definitely record a song. I've been I've been making a lot of beats lately, so we're good. We definitely can. I just gotta give you. I don't think you have my number, so I'm gonna give you my number later. We said focus means trying to listen to Professor Evans, but they hammering something around in the house, so I can't focus. <laughs> oh my goodness, you mad funny, brother. I'm. I'm definitely not a professor up in here, but hey, that's one sense of when, you know, you are in the classroom, or at least if you were as a kid, and a lot of kids now, when a teacher is saying focus, like, for them, it still be a concept of like, what do you mean by like focus? They're gonna ask specifically what? So do I focus on what you just said? Or do I focus on what you're writing? Like, what am I focusing on? So what am I putting my energy and intention and time into? And is that helping me get where I need to go or fulfilling something that's with inside of me? That is where, you know, you put that focus in there too, yeah. It's a classic book. Also check out Stealing Fire. Okay. You've been giving me these book recommendations, man. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to you got to DM these because these are gonna disappear. ADV gang stand up. Fourth order, that's my focus. I feel that. I know. Cause I know right now, wait, Cornelius, are they still are you still able to um ball in any leagues? I know because of all that's going on, I wanted to see if that's still a thing. Cause I get that. Cause fourth quarter, we call that crunch time, man. So that's when you really gotta, you know, get get down, get rooted, and you gotta focus. Like there's no time to be playing around at, at that particular case. So I like that. That's what's up. Shoot. As a neurodivergent, focus very important to me. It's a part of my search for serotonin. That's what I'm talking about. Um, once I find my serotonin job pack, I'm super focused because I'm so relaxed. I appreciate, yeah. And I, I love how you're using the fact of serotonin and how important of a neurochemical that that is when it comes to the body. I'm not gonna break any down anything down like that for y'all. This is not science, any type of class like that. But just know it's an it's an important, you know, part that helps us build as a person, whether if it's for you know sleep or anything else. But very important. Yeah, but no, at the parks and run games. Hey. Hey, that's see, look at, and then the thing is, you're also saying early when you're saying you're bored, my man. There's literally that, like, bro, you got at least that whenever you can. But that's what's up. But with with this finding a focus, it really goes deeper into really the realms of like you really asking yourself, what do you really want to focus on? you know for the rest of your life and what i mean by focus that doesn't we're not saying like you have to intently be looking at something forever and ever and ever i know there's gonna be times when we lose focus and then we forget about what's going on and what we're supposed to be doing but that focus and finding that is also part of the why and once you know your why 
if what you're doing something, you get that, you gain that motivation, you gain that focus, and you're able to hone in on that, even with the outside distractions, and put that all together as you're moving to do that. Yes, Kundin, you can definitely jump on. Please do. Please show me that. Like, I'm really, I really want you to go ahead. Let me see. Let's add you up in here. But just, and if you, if you're feeling that it's really hard to find that focus and be able to maintain and keep that, this is a great time right now to really figure out what do you, what do you, you do very often that shows a lot of the connection hey. that you be in focus. Hey, Kunin. Welcome to What's the Weather Wednesdays, brother. I appreciate you jumping on. Yeah. What's the word in there? So tell me what's the word. What's going on? What's the word? So I painted this painting to help me focus last year. And okay. And I also wanted to feel spaces. Okay. Oh man, Kundin, you're out because you're moving around. Ah, Kundin, we got to put you back in. Hold on. Let's see if he'll come back, y'all. There it is. Are you back with us? Yeah, I'm back. Can you see the painting? All right, perfect. Yes. Yes. Hey, human. I'm a next toy. Nice to see you up in here. Welcome to What's the Word Wednesdays. Mm. Yeah, I know. I know. I see you, Cornelius. I know he is a bit. Yeah. Am I lagging? Yeah, you're lagging right now. Oh, let me. Oh. Let me move into the next zone and say, what's up? But to your comment, to your comment, um, Cornelius, yes, you do, you do gain power with that focus, because then you be able to also build on your own personal power and knowing, you know, you're gaining not only that confidence within yourself, but you're also gaining, you know, some more of that inner self and love as well too. Once you begin to notice the power within that focus, and then the power is within you and how you use it. All right, let's see. Go ahead, Kuni. Come on. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Can you see me? There we go. There we go. So, there's a painting. So. Yes, no, we're good. We're great. Great. Now you can see it, huh? Yeah. So, it's a circle. Mm -hmm. And there's three circles in here, right? There is yes. the purple circle, the black circle, and then the white mm -hmm. circle in the middle, that's like an eye. And then yes. around the black circle, there is a bunch of trees and green grass growing out of it. Mm -hmm. So it represents to me from that focus at the center, which is what the yes. the white at center, the eye represents. And then from that focus, we're able to grow roots and plants and trees. We're able to grow a rich environment for ourselves and we become spaces mm. right? yes we become the purple circle and then we become the sky itself but yes. conversely the sky the blue above helps us focus sky gazing is a very good practice to help us with the focus mm -hmm. so we become both spacious yes. and focused at the same time that's See that I, I love that you shared that too, Kundin, because like just going from that, like I didn't even think of I didn't even ask like really what what is the main, you know, body part, if not sense, that's really attributed to focus. And you just really gave it in that painting that really just that eye and how, you know, you're mm -hmm. talking about the gazing and how, you know, as you're you know, in that middle and that core, get into the center and seeing what's all there around you. You're able to hone in and focus on that stuff. But then it also gave me a great 
you know, it also gave me even a deeper perspective of how literally it's the same thing with taking a camera or, or when it comes to broadening your perspective, when it comes to stuff like that too, once you've able to like get down to know something that's very focused, you're able to start having and you seeing more and more as you really begin to, you know, open that focus up, which I appreciate you sharing that. Exactly. Yeah. That is beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat> what else you got? What's the what else is the word for us right now? Oh yeah, I also wanted to explain my comment earlier about being a a neurodivergent, right? That's basically another word for being on the somewhere on the autism spectrum. And mm. one of the things about that is uh we tend to be one version, there are different versions of it. Some people are super talented, right, in one or two yeah. fields, like they're great at drawing, and like there's mm -hmm. Stephen Wilshire who makes these amazing drawings just from seeing it one time, right? He's able to draw it mm -hmm. exactly. Oh. That's he's super focused. And but conversely, there are people like us who are multi-passionate and multi-creative who yes. are, you know, I, I draw, I paint, I write poems, I, I sing, I dance, um, I also tell stories, and I now have been making animations. And what I discovered in discussing with other neurodivergent people is yeah. uh, there's a version of ADHD that comes with it that is actually a good thing when, mm. we, learn, when we learn what it's actually about. And yeah. I learned that it's actually a search for serotonin. It's so step, y'all. Welcome, step. Yeah. What's the word? Wednesdays. We're here right now talking about finding focus and, you know, Kundin right now. This is the brother Kundin down here, um, Steph, right now. And he's he's definitely laying down some wisdom and knowledge right now, explaining to me, especially what a neurodivergent and is and getting deeper into that. So good to have you up in here. But go ahead, Kundin. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I was talking about how, so me being interested in many different subjects and doing many different activities and actually trying to find more and more newer and newer activities yes. to do to keep me engaged, it's actually a search for serotonin, mm. for, for like what relaxes me the most, what gives me the most amount of, what triggers the most amount of serotonin in my brain which is what chemical it relaxes me. Yeah. And, and once I find that, I am not only super focused, I'm super relaxed. And it's like, it's like an amazing pleasure also. To mm. that, uh, the erotic of pure power that's yes. beyond the sexual. This is pure energy. Yes. And I recently found that, for example, with actually uh, carving wood we're kind of like wood carving, but I'm carving lines into the wood rather than carving shapes and the kind of drawing with the wood. Yes. I the pen, I'm just carving lines directly into the wood. And that's super focused me and super relaxes me at the same time. Mm. That's, cool. no, that's beautiful. Know. Yes. Oh, yeah, man. If any of y'all missed too, yeah, Kundin showed us um, um, a art piece of his and was able to explain that to us or what that was. And I mean, going off of this too, you um, also have made me start thinking a lot more. And there it is right there. Like, if y'all want to put in there too, like what helps y'all focus? Cause I didn't even think about it. Cause then there's things that people use as aids to help them focus as well too. I know there's a lot of people who have different, you know, essential oils and different smells that helps them to induce a state of focus or be able to stay to a task or we have those kids, like you were saying earlier, too, that, you know, might um, on that um, ADHD, you know, line there. And a lot of them also have, like, little fidget toys and other different things that help them find their focus in that moment. And exactly. it's really, yeah. it's really when it comes to finding your fo focus is knowing, is knowing what you want to focus on, um, how are you going to use, how are you going to focus on it? And what are the who are the people, things, and resources that you can use to help you focus? And I think once you get a consistent 
flow of knowing all of that and there's a lot more to still come with it you're able to get yourself into a state which i said earlier which they called it was a state of flow where you are just in it and it feels like you're you've only been in it for like a few minutes but it ends up turning out to be hours and hours and you're just in that state of focus mm -hmm. i'm glad you brought up the visit twice because for me um uh, dance gets me into the flow and it's because um there's an actual term called stimming in mm. the neurodivergent community uh, which describes what people are doing when they play with the fidget toys and it doesn't even have to be a fidget toy it can be uh playing with the nail clipper uh moving it around it can be yeah. uh moving the legs back and forth uh <clears throat> and so i've learned over the years to to be stimming in a way that's kind of almost like artistic as well you know mm. because because when i was young uh the way i was stimming was moving my legs back and forth and the the adults around me said oh stop doing that because that's rude which now in retrospect doesn't even make sense you know? yeah we were trying to be oppressive towards mm -hmm. me by the process and imposing the the rude polite bond binary on me and and that's how uh it kind of destroys our natural emotional regulation mechanisms yes. so as an adult i had to learn how to reclaim them and and actually even make it more focused where i'm now trying to kind of focus it into an artistic form as well yes and that's Oh, that's beautiful because then now that that really also this helps to put into perspective when you have you know you come in contact with different people and really knowing like if something like that is you know helpful for them to be able to focus but it may you know be somewhat of like an inconvenience or annoyance to you it's really great to know that because like you like you were saying it made me think about times that I was in class or I even went into a classroom to go teach and I would notice certain kids, you know, fidget a little more than usual or they would keep getting up or moving. And as you're in the class and you're teaching, you know, to you, that's off putting to you to where you're thinking like, oh, you know, you might be thinking in the back of your head, you're like, all right, this kid is making, giving in a hard, difficult time for me to get this lesson to them. But in retrospect, if you really looked at and see that as a sign as like they are still engaged even if they might just be looking down and just like writing their name on the carpet or one person has to get up and just like move their legs and stuff around it just gives you a lot of insight to know you know that if you allow them to be who the, you know who they are and how they function to get their focus you are opening up more doors for them to enjoy the process of learning and not make it oppressive like you were stating Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up too. So you teach in a classroom? I've I've done I've done a few lessons around social emotional, you know, skills for I mostly did on first graders and this was this was probably this probably about a year, about a year year back when I was doing it for my internship for my um my master's program. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not really, I should say, like, I'm not really a big fan of wanting to be a teacher per se, because I know a lot of, you know, about what the backstory for kids when coming to the schools. So meeting them where they're at needs wise, instead of trying to teach them all of these state standards and all these different tests that they need to pass versus looking straight where they're at right now and be like well that that kid didn't end up getting food for the you know for today like i'm hungry i or they didn't get to sleep last night because mom and dad something happened so like learning that process you know that's the reason why i personally not into teaching but i stepped out on you know not faith but i stepped out and i took the challenge of trying to do that go into a classroom and teach a lesson for about 45 minutes to close to an hour to kids about how to social you know to cope with different different coping mechanisms and strategies and you know using it in a fun way and you know as I, as i did that and got comfortable like 
you know, I came to I came to see that that would be one thing if I were to per se be a teacher or would want to pass something on to kids or anyone, it would be to have a lot more life skills oriented things rather than, you know, the math. So I know English writing, reading and writing is very important for sure. Yes, I'm not saying that it's not, but shoot, if a kid really upset and doesn't know how to regulate themselves, that's just important as knowing how to read. If not even almost, if not even more, because if they're not able to regulate those emotions and keep, you know, themselves at ease, then what does it mean for them to read? They don't care. Like literally I'm upset at everything else around me. I don't know what to do. I'm going to start throwing things and just that whole, that whole sense of itself there. But but yeah, I got to do a little bit of that for, you know, the past year. And then this recent, this recent year, since I just graduated, before all the COVID stuff happened, I was doing small groups with fourth graders when it came to, you know, learning different, also social, emotional, you know, skills. So like, I kept that as a, as a niche for me because of the need and seeing that that was the need because within that I get to grow and see what necessary skills is needed for kids and seeing how once they find those skills what they need as well as if it's something about most of them it was really about a lot of organization a lot of focus a lot of how to really interact with others maybe how to find something that you know they love creatively and like once I was able to put those pieces together, like I, I got to see a bit before, you know, it prematurely, you know, ended. But a lot of the kids were able to at least express themselves and really be able to find what helped them at least focus at the point in time. Like I would implement bringing in, I have a tongue drum, like a little small version of a tongue drum. So I would implement using um, breathing like different types of breathing with them as well as using those sounds to help trigger in their minds to help them also become calm and relaxed and get into a state of being focused. So it was all pretty nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Man, that's great. Yeah. I think I have a ton, ton drum too. It's the one that's a little ball, right? With the little stick. Yeah. I got you. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, this buddy right here, mine is small, but this one. Oh, yeah. Mine is this one right here. Hey, yup. I think I yeah. did see you have that in a recent video, too. Yeah, yeah, I that's played what's that. Up. Yeah, that's what's up. Oh, and then here's the yeah, book no. I was talking yeah, about. No. It's the book I was hmm. talking about, the 12 Golden Pills of Power. Ah. Yeah. It's, How uh, long is it? It's a smaller book. World huh? Okay. Yeah, it's a smaller nice. book. It's only two. Like, you got you like a little, okay. Look at his bookshelf. Oh, yeah. I got I like a, a whole <laughs> bookshelf. I designed it this way so that I can see the actual covers. Because I wanted to uh, wake up every morning to my books and be like, hey, well, hello, yeah. books. <laughs> yep. I like it. I like it. I mean, yeah. All right. And is there any other more that you wanted to speak on the piece when it comes to finding focus? Because then if not, we're going to move to the last topic for the show for today and get to speak on that. But is there any more you wanted to add to the Find and Focus? Yeah, that's it. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. Now, I appreciate you coming on, too. But I'll see you. Um, All right, you, too. Appreciate it. Thank you, Kunda, for coming in here. And having a um, discussion and conversation. I really do appreciate that. Now, just to wrap up when coming to finding your focus, it's really just knowing what you want to focus on, what you really want to get yourself doing, what are, how you want to end up doing it, where, who, what will help you be able to do and have that focus. And when you put those all there together, you will be on the right steps and path in finding your focus. 
What's going on, brother? Good to see you up in here. Brother Buffet, destroy it. Good to see you. But now we're moving into the last part and segment of the show, which speaking on what is power and how do you use it? And to go off of what that is and how we use it, I do go back to another comment that was made earlier about how having you get that power from having that focus and really using that to build on yourself. But what is power? Y'all can throw it in the comments. Tell me, what do we, when we first hear the word power, what do we think of? So I know while the while the comments are coming in, I know when I think of the word power, a lot of times the first thing that does come to my mind is physical, but also mental power. So being strong and being able to pick something up, people call you powerful. As well as having very a mental stronghold, people call your mind being powerful because it's a it's a powerful tool you can use to not only influence yourself towards greatness, but able to influence others towards greatness. As well as with words and the things that you state can also be powerful. So knowing the words that you speak and put out into existence are also very powerful but in terms of how we're speaking on it where and what truly is power and to get that i have our boy google over here because it's such a great reference right since everybody in their mama we all use google but basically from google what is given us it says that power is the ability to do something or act in a particular way especially as a faculty or a quality so basically what it's saying is when you think when we're talking about power we talk about also ability to be able to do something so when you say that, exactly. So when you think of the word power, you know, some people will think of dominance because it is an, an act. You know, a lot of people in power, like we can talk about the system that we in, the way that they show that they're powerful is they use it through the almighty, what they call dollar. Another synonym for power, also we have mighty. So strong, strength, all of that going in, in together when we think of the word power. Now, having that ability or act to be able to do something, it is determined on your outlook, your focus, and where you wanna end up taking this. In, fact, in physics, I think of the literal definition is energy to do work and then give, exactly, yeah. It, it definitely can be that too. Be like, it can be the energy that you have throughout the day to help you power up. The power from your phone, the battery, that mean the energy that all coincides together. And in this particular case, when we're thinking of you know power and how to use it, we we can always go back to the differences between talking about you know good power, bad power, you know, just to keep it at a base level and how do you use that to either help push yourself forward, push others forward, or add to the mess that is already created to what we see now. We, like I said, a great example of what we see right now empowers a lot of people who have a lot of money who have a lot of you know stature to be able to be doing something and it's show and showing us that they have control over a lot of people that's in this particular realm so power in itself can get a bad rap because of the fact that it can be 
misused. It can be taken out of the context of what it was really for. And when we think about that power, it's more so, once again, that energy and an ability to be able to do something, whether it's the good or bad for us. So when we think about it, force multiplied by displacement over time. I feel that. What's up, brother? Just blue. Good to see you up in here. Welcome to What's the Word Wednesdays, my brother. Yeah, we're just on the last late half. Got about another, you know, 14 minutes to wrap up. But brother, tell me what's good. Tell me what's the word. Throw it in the comments. Right now we're talking about what is power and how do you use it? So when I think, once again, I think my perspective on power, I really do think about how it affects how you do things to a certain to a certain extent and how much influence you're able to have over you know other folks and when thinking of using it either for the good and the bad it comes down to once again your own focus your own morals your own ethics and the code when we think about that power and how you use it. So funny enough, I'm about to crack open power versus force. Handle it, brother. Please do. Man. Hey. What's up what's with you, going brother? On, brother? Man, chilling, chilling, man. It's a crazy ass uh topic that you're talking on right now because uh I was at I was at work one time, right? Mm-hmm. And uh tell me this. Have you ever ran into people that kind of gave you a situation like whether it be an old head, be an old head in your game, or just somebody that you never even run into, and they drop some knowledge on you. Yes. Right? Yes. So when they drop that knowledge on you, I've always been a firm believer that just being the person that you are, they read that within that moment, just being that they live life, right? So they read that moment within you to make them say what they've noticed about you. So say within the same day. Yes. Whether it be that I'm, I'm pretending me pretending I'm that old head, right? Okay. Within that same day, I run into you, and I drop some knowledge on you, and then I come across myself. I come across another cat. I may drop some completely different game on him. Yes. Because I feel that's what would work for him at that moment. You know what I mean? So, what I'm getting at is I had this old cat coming to me at my job one day. I was selling jewelry. Yeah. He leaned over the counter and he asked me, he said, do you know the difference between power and force? Mm. And I was like, nah, I feel like I do, but I always give people an under, you know, an opportunity to give me their explanation of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So his explanation of it was, have you ever walked into a room or he said this, he said, Picture yourself walking into a room. When you walk into that room, yeah, without saying anything, without doing anything, do people stop and turn around to see who is entering the room? What's going on? Mm. Versus that same room you walk into and you have to cause a distraction mm. to be noticed. So that first example I gave, when you walk into that room, and it, they automatically notice your presence, notice what you're about. They're curious about you. That's that power. Mm -hmm. But when you walk in and cause a disruptive force in that moment, you forcing the power or the room to look at you. And he looked at mm -hmm. me and was like, I noticed your power levels. You have There's a power meter. You feel me? He's like, yes. you know you have a very strong power meter. And if you haven't read this book, and that's what really got me into wanting to understand this book, bro, I just ended up literally, G. What book you got? Man, let me, I'm about to pull it out for you right now. Don't tell me it's the 48 Laws of Power. It's, it's a step beyond that. Oh, okay. It's a step beyond that. This joint right here. Oh. So, if you ain't been on game with this, this is what he put me on game with. Mm. Power versus force. You feel me? But yes. what fucked me up about it is I got maybe about three, four pages in there. And it said yeah. before before you actually 
can understand the difference between power versus force, you have to understand what power is. Mm. You feel me? So yeah. that's where it turned me into the 48 laws of power. All right, we got the same. Do it. Do it <laughs> you do feel, it. You, you feel me? In the air, y'all. Exactly. You feel me? So I felt like, you know what? I've been living my life based on a portion of the 48 laws of power mm. because uh, OGs that I grew up with. You feel yeah. me? And they will put me on game with it. And the one rule I will always follow, the one that really stuck out to me at the time and still is true today, is the first rule. Hmm. Never outshine the master. Yep. Especially in this rap game. I think Crooked Eye actually just made a tweet about that. And uh, the shit really kind of got me thinking about it is, man, everybody want to be the best. Yep. Everybody want to be on top. Mm -hmm. But nobody want to take that opportunity to take the back seat and let somebody show them they way. You feel me? Yeah. A jack of all trades, but a master of none. You feel me? So how can you outshine the master if you ain't a master yourself yet? Exactly. You know what I mean? So exactly. it's it, it kind of... I'm really, like I said, I'm, I'm about to crack into this motherfucker, really, for real, for real. You know what I mean? After That's I finish that joint. So I say definitely check that out. It's by, uh, who is this shit by? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> David R. Hawkins, MD, okay. PhD. So Power Verse 4. So I'd say once you've done Chopping Game with the 48 Laws, check that yeah. joint out. You know what I mean? Okay. Now, I actually just went ahead and Googled that thing right now, so for sure. But yeah, no. See, that's a. I'm glad. I'm glad you jumped on because really, I I was looking into you know that whole perspective when it comes to you know just power and then you bringing in that idea of force because literally, if you do think of people who rule or you think of how people when they also lead, you can tell whether if a leader is powerful through the way they already walk and imbue themselves and through you know their actions versus a leader who's very forceful so you right. get a different fit you get a different feeling from them you you would have more loyalty more respect which also i think respect is not it's not um gained or earned you already start off with it's just the way how you move very similar to power but mm -hmm. you have more respect you have more you know admiration or, and you like a leader who you know, it zoots that power and uses it to help uplift you more versus a leader who's forcing you to be doing so many different things. You're not going to be willing to want to um, hold down and be, um, be, you know, loyal to them or even really continue to work alongside with them. There's going to be times where you just decide, I'm going to start slacking off, I'm going to start doing this versus someone who does have that power knows how, how to use that power. And when I mean use that power is really know how to use it only for not only for the betterment of themselves but also for the people in a collective around them you begin to create that community you create that unity and you create that sense of we're in this together versus me versus you versus them versus us versus i right and and you said something that really kind of stuck out to me about respect being uh not necessarily gained nor earned you feel me? Or uh, rejected in some ways. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to sidestep on that one just for the simple fact that, you know what I mean? Um, like, question for you. Where you from? Huh? Where you from? I'm from Cali, bro. What part? Um, I'm from, I'm like, I'm in a weird area, bro. I'm like, I'm in Hawthorne slash Inglewood slash close to Gardena. Like, it's well, all over the place. Hey, it's all good. I was born in Riverside, homie. Like, so, you know what I mean? So, you see that, like, cat, bro? Like, yeah, look, most Exactly. <laughs> so, but right now, I live in the Bay. Yeah. You feel me? So, I moved to the Bay Area, but I was born in Cali, raised in Vegas. Mm. So, I grew up in Vegas most of my life, but at the same time, as much as I was in Vegas, I was in Cali. So, I still have that <laughs> close knitness. You feel me? Because most yeah. people... Still think they're like, 
You feel me? Like, <laughs> it, it's just it's natural shit. But right. what I'm saying is, it's like, you know, moving from place to place. I went from Vegas to Reno for college for a little <laughs> bit. Reno, yeah. back to Vegas, and from Vegas to the Bay. Now, yeah. I'm around completely different motherfuckers. You feel me? Like, and I don't know if you cuss on it, so excuse my friends, bro. But oh, you good? You good? You good, bro? For sure, for sure. So I'm around completely different motherfuckers that are from the people I grew up around. Yes. You feel me? And they don't necessarily know what I'm about. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So when you walk into certain places, you can have that same power, right? Mm -hmm. But you can't always guarantee somebody's going to respect it. Oh, no, very true. You know what I mean? So yeah. when it comes down to it, it's like I could walk in a room and somebody feels threatened by me. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Without me mm -hmm. even doing anything. You feel me? I could be like, what's going on with you, bro? My name is Blue. Nice to meet you. I can approach this dude with the utmost respect. Yes. Because I ain't trying to start nothing. You feel me? Yep. But it's into a situation of where it, it almost is like a mirror. They see where they are as a person. Yep. You feel me? They see mm -hmm. where they are as a person compared to where you are and how you hold yourself. You feel yep. me? I lived with a person that invited me to live in their house. Right? Me and my mm -hmm. girl. He, he invited me to live in his house because he was dating my lady sister. And I'm there a week and the old boy got problems with me. You feel mm -hmm. me? By the time I left, he was calling people on the phone trying to set me up. <laughs> Boy, what, wow. what did I do? I went to work every day, handled my business, but it was just the way I held myself in his household yeah. that he couldn't fuck with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I had to understand that it wasn't necessarily that I did anything wrong, but he yeah. was an insecure male. He was an insecure person of his own. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He felt that I was forcing my way into his home, but it wasn't necessarily forced. You asked me yeah. to be here. You asked me to be here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I looked at it as like that was my first lesson after I had that conversation with that old dude where he was like power versus force. Mm -hmm. You can walk in a place and somebody just not like you just because you radiate too much power for them. In those yes. cases, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, and you don't necessarily want to do that too much. But it's like mm -hmm. if that's just who you are and naturally, you just walk into a place. You got to accept that. Yeah, I might have an issue tonight because somebody may not like the way I do things. You exactly. Feel <laughs> you you're not going to be here. You're not going to be here to literally cater to every single person when it comes to their own feelings towards how you approach them or how you say or do things. Cause I mean, in this era we in now, the whole thing of being politically correct and everything else, if you say one thing, you're gonna step on their toes and step on their toes and step on their toes, but you're trying to do right. it out of the respect. But this is where it becomes vital to have talks and to use this communication to be able to figure this out. And then yeah. that's how you're able to be able to maneuver and, you know, go around. I'm, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm not just going to just walk up into your house and just be like, yeah, bro, like, let me just get that. What's up in the fridge? All dun -dun. You're going to be looking like me like, bro, first, I only met you one time. Two, one how, time. You get to my, how you get to my house? And three, like, why are you going in trying to get into my food? I don't know you like that. So literally knowing your environment, knowing how to communicate and being you know, it's just really that's the main thing as humans. We communicate. So knowing how to do that on a really high level, you'll be able to, in the terms of your song, you crack the code, bro. <laughs> hey, shout out to you. But you know what I mean? And that's that's honestly what it is. You know what I mean? Like, you can't necessarily assume you know a person. Yeah. Based on, you know what I mean? He was somebody that claimed he was from the streets. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I've done my little dirt in the street, but I'm not necessarily like, hey, I can't tell you, like, look, I got 10 cases on me. There. I got Look, yeah. I was out here doing my thing. You feel me? But I was chilling. Yeah. All right. Before I have you do, seat. before you continue, bro, we only got 15 seconds left. If you want to continue, I will start back up another one. If not, bro, last word, tell everybody literally what you feel and literally 
that we end it like that. Hey, one time, I'll just say this. Use your power wisely. Never and force yourself upon.